while. I just had an amazing yoga class with her, and um, she was right at my pace. And I don't know, I stayed relaxed through the whole thing. I really loved it. I'm really thankful. I really needed it at this point in this journey. I've really got me relaxed and living my purpose and I've been so tense and just overwhelmed really with the whole process of the trip so far and so today I really am starting to feel like it's starting to benefit me and you're a big part of that. So thank you. I really appreciate that. And so I wanted to ask you, I know you have an amazing story, um, what you got, how you got started or motivated to get on the road to just being more conscious and aware of what's good for you and what raises your vibrations and detoxes your body and gets you uh, to well go, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it all started, I guess, for me a little over five years ago. Um, I was at least 350 pounds. That's as high as my scale went. Wow. And it took me a couple months to get the scale to start moving. So I knew I was at least 350 um, And... I was very unhealthy, didn't actually have an official diagnosis of what was wrong with me. Um, the doctors called fibromyalgia, my all over the body, aches inflammation, joint pain, extreme fatigue that pretty much kept me nearly bed bound. Um, I would do, um, anytime I would do anything like, you know, have a big burst of house cleaning or go shopping, I would be in bed for two days afterward, just trying to recover. Um, and anyway, I had eventually hit the point where I felt like I had to change things. I just, things were spiraling out of control, and I was considering weight loss surgery, but that didn't feel right. I didn't feel like fixing the problem. It felt like putting a bandage on it. Oh, so that was not that. what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I started... Um, Slowly changing my eating habits, one thing at a time, as I could commit to that change. And that's the way to do it. Because then you don't shock yourself. Yeah. Then you really get somewhere, and then it's easy to take the next step. Yeah. The next because you would feel successful. Yeah. I would do little challenges with myself, saying, "Okay, for one month, no sugar, just no sugar." Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you does it takes a challenge like that for you to realize how much has sugar in it. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, I would challenge myself to something for a month, and at the end of that month, I would say, you did it. Can you still do this longer? Uh -huh. You know, and through that month, you sort of detox from whatever that was, and mm -hmm. then I would say, can, I, can you commit to doing this forever? Most of the time, yes. Sometimes I would say, no, I really can't, and mm -hmm. I would come back and challenge myself again later until mm -hmm. I felt really ready to speak to it. But um, I slowly started making changes, ended up losing nearly 100 pounds, and then I went in, I had already known I had hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. went into my endocrinologist, and I had lost enough weight that he could actually feel my neck. And when he was checking my neck, he said, your neck is full of nodules. And so he did biopsies and found that I had cancer that had, and after they um, took out my thyroid and did surgery, they also found it spread the lymph nodes, and they took those out too, and did radioactive iodine treatment and everything, and it was, that was pretty much taken care of. Um, it's not something that, it's a cancer that has a very, very high cure rate, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I now had an awareness that my body was willing to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has that, uh, what I like to call the luxury of denial. Mm -hmm. When you can say, well, yeah, that happens to people, but not me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that luxury anymore. I know my body will go there. Mm -hmm. if, I, if the conditions are right, it'll go straight there. It'll, it'll make me sick. So um, anyway, through the um, treatment, thyroid cancer is one of the few cancers that when you get treated, you know, most people think, oh, you've got cancer, you're going to get really skinny while you're being treated. No, not thyroid cancer. <laughs> they take you off all your medications and they take out your thyroid gland. And so you have no metabolism while you're being treated. So um, I, through the treatment process and they, they come back every couple months and be testing and taking off my medicine again, I ended up gaining back 70 of the pounds I had lost. And so um, not only was I really committed to taking care of my body. I was also angry mm -hmm. because I had worked so hard and I kept trying to not gain weight, but it happened anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So I was really, really, really clear on what it was I want. And I was protective of getting what I want. And getting what I want out of life, having, I didn't want to be the sick person anymore. I didn't want to be the person who was um, in bed or who was in pain or who wasn't enjoying life or who was watching my kids from a distance. Um, yeah. But, um, so yeah, I went, I continued to make more and more changes over time, continued challenging myself to take out vices and add in good things. Um, I went through a big phase where every week at the grocery store I would um, challenge myself to pick up a vegetable that I either thought I hated or had never tried. And the things that I thought I hated, you know, things that you tried them once or twice and you're like, oh, I can't stand that vegetable. I would buy it, bring it home, get on the internet, Google, and find different ways to prepare it, ways I've never had it, ways it sounded like I might actually like them. Uh -huh. And I did. Uh -huh. Found out some of the things that I thought I hated are now my favorite. Oh, how creative. That's <laughs> awesome. You'd be an awesome health coach because you know you went through this process and you were set yourself up for success, which a lot of people set themselves up for failure because they're like, oh, I got to do it 100% right now or... I suck, you know, but you didn't do that. You like did it in stages. Because it was, I'm not even doing it to me. Mm -hmm. I think for me that was, a, yeah. once I had kind of had this big mind shift and cancer brings you there, mm -hmm. um, I was no longer trying to lose weight because I wasn't good enough or I thought I was ugly or I was angry at myself. It was because I wanted to do something for myself. Yes, yeah. So yeah, over over time, I ended up losing 200 pounds uh -huh. and completely changed my life. I'm now vegan. I'm also gluten free mm -hmm. because I found that through this whole process, grains are not my friend, most especially gluten grains. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, I mostly mostly eat produce mm -hmm. and just really try and live a good clean life. Yay! <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story because somebody's going to really resonate with that. So I'm sitting here with Monica, the owner of Pure Vegan Cafe in, is it downtown? Is it? Uh, it's St. Louis City. St. Louis City. So what are your thoughts on juicing and raw foods? My thoughts on them is that sometimes people hear that and it seems overwhelming and they think it has to be all or nothing, but I think just starting with baby steps, the more anybody, regardless of what your diet is, if you eat meat, you don't, the more raw fruits and vegetables you can get into your diet, the better health you're going to see. So right. if, you, if you go drastic with it, you're going to have drastic health improvements. And if you make small changes, you'll see some small improvements. So either way, you can, everybody can benefit from getting more. A lot of juice in here, just tasting all the drinks we make here at the cafe, I almost don't have to make myself a juice mm -hmm. because I'm always making sure that the customer stays good. Right. But um, I think it's an important supplement to eating whole raw foods. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily use it as a way, my only way to get veggies because you need the fiber from the plants, but I like to use it as a supplement to eating raw plants. Yeah, my advice is I mean, the less processed, the better. Try to eat less food that requires a package. Um, the more packaging there is, or if it doesn't have to be refrigerated, it's usually a good sign that it's been processed and you, you've lost some of the nutrients. Um, but also not to beat yourself up, I try, um, being a raw foods restaurant, you certainly have a lot of people that are excited, but then, you know, there's a lot of criticism too. Like maybe you could always, you could always take it one more step extreme, no matter what you're doing, but don't let the perfect drag off the good. That's kind of been my mantra for the last year is that, um, you know, sometimes I might use a toasted sesame oil and it's not purely raw, but if I'm using a little bit of oil, so that I can eat a plate full of raw veggies and it makes it taste good. To me, I feel like I'm, um, don't let the perfect drive up the good. Like maybe that wasn't 100% raw, but I eat more raw veggies than the average human. When you're along your path, you're always gonna run into people that will tell you you should be doing something more. And just try to find out what works best for you. There's a lot of 
books and gurus and people who have very convincing information, and that can be great, but you have to know what feels best for you. You can't just uh, you can't just read a book and go what they say blindly. You have to mm-hmm. check in with yourself, make sure it's right for you, and adjust accordingly. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. Hey y'all, so we're here with Gabe and um, we're still in St. Louis, Missouri. Are you from here, Gabe? I was born in Honduras, but I thought I was one day old. Oh. But then I've lived here all my 25 years. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. One day old. Wow, they got you brand new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brand spanking new. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, what's your major health problem that you're dealing with? I suffer from muscular dystrophy, mm-hmm. um, and it's basically a weakness of the muscles that you think you're sort of born with that. Um, it's genetic. Mm-hmm. Um, you will never know to be the carriers. Mm-hmm. But um, basically, I went from, you know, I was able to walk when I was younger. Then I had surgery that um, was supposed to help, um, supposed to help alleviate some of the uh, toe walking that I was doing, and then I ended up. Um, be a wheelchair because the, the, um, my muscles become too weak. Mm-hmm. But that's sort of part of the prognosis. But I've been in a wheelchair ever since I was eight inches over time. I was, um, I may have been having that work. Um, you know, part of what now was like, like I had that back surgery at some point, um, because of scoliosis and, um, I had a pacemaker with, um, some cardiac mm-hmm. problems. But, um, those are sort of the extent of my health problems and even now the doctors are saying that um, that even my diagnosis isn't exactly what they predicted a while ago that actually my form might be less severe because there are over you know 40 different kinds of neuromuscular diseases mm-hmm. related and so now they're kind of saying that I'm sort of a mystery because I'm not exactly clear what the diagnosis is. So mm-hmm. That uh, also sort of changes the outlook on my life expectancy. Mm-hmm. What do you think, um, sensation wise, what do you struggle with most on a daily basis? Well, uh, a couple things that are deadly for me are, for example, if I get the flu mm-hmm. um, or anything that's respiratory that can turn into pneumonia, is sort of um, something that I need to stay far from and, you know, be of in terms of my respiratory system as much as possible because if I were to get the flu, it can definitely be very deadly. Because of your lungs? The or? Lung okay. Lung lung right, lung. that makes sense. So staying away from that is pretty important mm-hmm. and um, also just making sure that my cardiac function is still strong. What's your prognosis with your cardiac? What is your cardiac prognosis? Well, I have uh, a cardiomyopathy, mm-hmm. which is a large heart, but um, my cardiac, I haven't had many issues with it um, since like 2003, mm-hmm. but um, that's mostly stable, but I guess my bigger word would be anything respiratory. Mm-hmm. Um, the top mucus forming foods are meat dairy and then processed foods, processed mm. white foods. So I would suggest immediately trying to cut down on those things and, um, and increase the juicing because that can really help get rid of stuff that's already in you that should something like that come upon you, it could you know, compromise it even more. If you're already cleaned out and you get something like that, there's going to be less mucus than if you know, you're not cleaned out. And so... Mm. I would do that if um, I'm thinking that that might benefit you. So. What are your thoughts on juicing? Well, I started in February, mm-hmm. and I mostly went, I, I sort of discovered it on my own. I said, oh, I could juice that might be good. And I realized, well, you know, I have a problem from chewing um, very, you know, firm foods. So I thought, well, if I can't, really eat it, maybe I'd just juice it. Mm-hmm. Maybe that would be a good supplement. And then I went from that to me juicing every single day, mm-hmm. um, trying different things and, you know, thinking that, well, maybe this could actually go through my I could actually boost my immunity or mm-hmm. get more energy and 
you know, just feel better overall. And uh, maybe I'll lose weight, maybe I won't. Not that weight was a very important issue for me, but just, you know, improving quality of life. Mm-hmm. So I think that's sort of where I'm going with it now. What's your favorite? What's my favorite? Well, I like greens a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of ginger. Uh huh. <laughs> you like the spice of it. And I've uh, discovered turmeric. Oh, yeah. I just give juicing a try and see where it leads you. If you could think of one thing that you think maybe your purpose here on this earth is about, what would it be? And find some enjoyment in life or do stuff that's fun or stuff that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. What do you think, um, if you woke up tomorrow and you could do whatever you wanted, what would it be? I'd probably try to travel more if I had all the means I needed, like, you know, at least two people that, um, you know, through, through caregivers or, mm-hmm. um, you know, a way to get my, my equipment transported. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if I could bring any friends along, you might need to. Who would you bring? If you could only bring two people, who would you bring? <sighs> That's a pretty good question. <laughs> I don't have any answer to that. Okay, just one person then. That might make it easier. Just one person to come. <laughs> Unfortunately. But, uh, probably a very good friend. Yeah. And where would be the first place you would want to go? Hmm. I, I had to think of some place I haven't been mm-hmm. before, so. Yeah. Probably the first place I haven't been. Yeah. Some place you hadn't been before. Yeah. Yeah. In the States, you think? We started with Jason. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There. There's so much to see here, you know? That's why I'm yeah. so excited about this trip. <laughs> and I never thought I would be in St. Louis ever in my whole life. <laughs> and here we are yeah. in this incredible spot. Your home is incredible. Yeah. And it's in St. Louis. Go figure. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. Oh.